Hey my friends, how are you doing today? Uh, today I want to share with you guys my struggle and kind of my testimony of my struggle and addiction to pornography and you know really how that affected my life and my intention for this video is really just to help other people out there that are struggling with this, men or women, and also people that are maybe searching for a spouse or uh, a child, uh, a family member, and just really wanting to know how you more, you know, how you can support them more through their addiction and through the struggle with this. And I've struggled with pornography and masturbation for the last. 15 years of my life and really only up until the last 10 years um, I'm 29 now but when I was about 20 years old um, that was when I realized that I did have a problem and only you know it's been a battle the last 10 years somewhat of trying to stop this addiction but only up until the last three have I really had the last three years of my life have I really had the support and all of the things that I needed to really overcome this and going through all of the books you know when I really wanted to stop and I realized that I had a problem you know I went out and bought all the books Christian books and I kind of I come from more of a spiritual Christian perspective because that really is the way that I've really been able to overcome it but I bought secular books on pornography and you know, read many Christian books, and just, I have a lot of information on different ways, and there's a lot of, you know, different ways out there that people are saying that you can overcome this, but for me, a lot of these other ways of, you know, changing your habits and doing certain things like this, um, really never had a lasting effect for me, but you know we'll talk more about that here kind of towards the end and I want to go more into my struggle with the pornography and kind of how what that turned into for me and how a little bit of how I came to overcome it you know I'm I don't really wanna I'm not gonna give you in this video like a full on of how to overcome pornography but I do plan to make more videos on the subject of addiction because really you know all kinds of addictions and really all healing can you can be healed through um, the process and the way that I have found you know you can really heal anything that's in your life any addictions any problems that you're having fear any of it and it's all taken care of uh, through what I have found in my life but for me, you know, it started when I was about 12 years old. I found some magazines, you know, down in my grandpa's basement. And, you know, really from then on, um, I was really just became addicted from that moment on. Because I had such great feelings from it. It just filled my mind and, you know, gave me this out of body out of world experience just from looking at the pictures and and then of course experiencing masturbation and and all of that really just sealed it for me to where I became addicted uh, to viewing pornography and masturbating and it progressed for me from um, from the watch you know just looking at pictures to watching movies um, you know video and that's really what it progressed into for me because the, eventually the pictures were not enough um, to really do anything for me once you build up a cycle of addiction and uh, through the, a lot of those years you know I kind of knew that what I was doing you know I kept it a secret of course I didn't want anybody else to know what I was doing um, actually kind of in the beginning 
uh, some of the ways that I would get it was from, you know, because I was still, you know, younger and in school at the time, and some of the ways that I would get it were from other people that, you know, were open about it and, you know, would give me DVDs and movies and things like that. So at that time, you know, there were other people, I guess, that kind of knew that I was doing it, but, um, and at that time, it wasn't really a thing where I, you know, I did keep it a secret when I was doing some of it, but, you know, I think at that time, maybe one of my brothers, actually, we would look at it together and do things like that. So it wasn't a total secret, but it, as it progressed on, you know, and my brother kind of went away from it and, you know, life moves on, it turned into something where it was just me. And really what I began to do was more isolate myself away from people. So it's a very isolating thing because for most people they don't want other people to know and that was eventually what it grew in for me is I didn't want people to know that I was using it and looking at porn because it, you know, it was kind of a shameful thing. I was ashamed that I was doing it and because I was doing it secretly and you know as time progressed on and I got into my 20s and I began to have more relationships with other women you know I realized that man this isn't something that I want to continue to do this isn't something that I want in my life and hold on just a second I'm gonna check this camera just to make sure it's still running here because I thought I heard something okay it's good but as, you know, my life progressed on, I just realized this isn't something that I want to continue to do in my life, you know. And that was kind of when I hit a wall and realized that, you know, man, I've got a, a problem with this. And, you know, I, I kind of really need help. And so, like I said, I went out and bought books and... Um, you know, started reading books on how I could overcome, and um, a lot of the things in there, you know, at first I thought I can just read books, and I'll be able to overcome just by reading these books, but really for me, the addiction had already taken too much of a grasp on my life, and I'd been doing it for so many years that, you know, that wasn't the case for me, and you know, so as I thought that I could do this thing on my own, you know, I realized, you know, that actually it's not working. You know, I can't do this on my own. Um, and let me just say, if you're somebody that, you know, is looking at pornography on a daily basis, if you do it on a daily basis, if you look at pornography or, or masturbating on a daily basis, you are addicted to pornography. And, you know, I'm not saying that you're a bad person because I was there too at one point. But what I'm saying is, is that that means that you really do have a problem with it and that you need to stop. Um, and I don't say that as you need to stop, but you need to realize that you do have a problem. If you're looking at it on a daily basis, it is a serious problem. And really, if you're looking at it at all, you know, it's not something you want to do because it will eventually turn in, possibly turn into where you're looking at it on a daily basis. Um, and I know that from my own experience. But the most important thing is to know this, that you're not a bad person. Because anybody that's been caught into the pornography for years and has isolated yourself and done all this to yourself, um, you know, you bring on this uh, cycle of guilt and shame into your life. And that is the cause, that is the main cause of your problem, of why you continue to do it. You see, the, your problem is really not with pornography. That is actually not even the problem, and this is what I came to find in my own life as I went through forgiveness and all of these things in my life as I just began to forgive myself for everything that had been happening in my life and release things is when I really began to become free. But I realized that pornography wasn't even really the problem. But what the problem was in my life was 
not being filled with love, not having the love that I needed, or feeling that I didn't have the love that I needed. And that was just a way to fill it up. The pornography was just a way to fill that. You see? And most of the time, it's always covered up by something deeper. And that's all that you're using the pornography is to cover up feelings of something else that's been going on. And that's one of the hardest things to look at. And the most important thing that I can leave with you about pornography and really how to overcome it, because the pornography really isn't the important thing about it all. You know, yes, you know, all of these little different things that you can do, but, you know, for me, you know, I don't even use blockers or anything on my computer. You know, I did a lot of that stuff, but I found that you know, really wasn't helpful because there was always a way that I could get around it. But what I really needed was mind training. What I really needed was to train my mind back into the right way. And that started off with realizing that, you know, who I really am and what my identity really is. And I like to say my identity in Christ and realizing that and knowing that you're not a bad person because that's where the cycles for any addiction come from. It comes from feeling that you're guilty and shameful and it's an attraction to guilt. It's You're also, you know, you're addicted to the images and the pornography but the underlying addiction is also that we become addicted to the guilt and the shame. We become addicted to that also. And that's where we have to begin to break it, because if we can begin to break it there, all of these images that we build up about ourselves that aren't true, you know, we've told ourselves that we're a terrible person, that we're bad, that we're worthless, that we're unworthy, and we're shame. we feel shame and guilt about who we are. And this image about who we think we are now has been built up, and this is not who we are. Who we really are, the Holy Spirit tells us who we really are. God tells me who I really am. And that is given to me, that I am a child of God, blessed and forgiven. That there is no condemnation for me. And that reminds me of what Jesus told the woman that was being accused of adultery. And at the end of all of that, he told her, I do not condemn you. And that is the way that God sees you right now, my friend. He sees you, that you're not condemned. It doesn't matter what you're doing with it. And that's where you can begin to break the cycle. And for me, that's how I began to break the cycle. Was it immediate? Did, did it immediately happen? Yes, immediately in my mind, I began to feel and see that there's a change taking place. And really, that change can only happen with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the only one that can show you this. He can speak through me to speak to what's inside of you because we're both spirit. And that's what we need to realize. Anybody that's watching this, we're all spirit. We all have a connection to God. So that part of me can speak to that part of you. But it only in the end is it you that has to realize that you're the one that has the power to make the change. You have the power to either choose to do and keep continue to believe in guilt and pain and all of these things in your life and that these are true, or you can believe in the light. That's what Jesus talks about in the Bible, light and darkness. So you can continue to believe in the darkness and all of these things about yourself and believe that those are true, that you've built up about yourself, that you're worthless and all of these things or you can begin to know the light and then, like I said only the Holy Spirit can really show you this inside of your own mind and begin to change your mind and it's not even something that you really do you only choose to allow the Holy Spirit to do this and you choose to allow God to show you the right way to begin to see the right way 
to begin to know yourself in a true way. And that is knowing yourself as being completely forgiven. That you're completely forgiven for everything and anything that you've ever done. And that actually all of that never even happened. Even if you looked at porn yesterday, that never happened because it's forgiven, my friend. It's forgiven. And that's the grace that we have. And that's where we have to begin to get. And when I began to really train my mind and really just accept the will of God for myself is when my life began to change and God's grace came in and really began to change my life. And that was with the acceptance of what do I really want from this and what is this for in my life. And that's really how I began to overcome. And I began to also overcome having people around me that loved me and that would support me and that I could talk to about that. Whether that's in a Christian group or maybe just a friend that you can go and have coffee with once a week and call on the phone. But you do need other people to help you in this also. You know, we can't do this alone. I'm here with you. And that's really where we have to realize is that we're not alone because that's also a separating factor that separates us away from being able to be healed. Because that's what we've done to our mind. We've believed all of these things about ourselves, and we separated ourselves from our true source and our true identity. And that's what we want to bring ourselves back to is realizing that we're really not separated from other people that we're joined, and that we can have good relationships, we can love other people, and we can be restored back to where we need to be restored back to. We can, our mind can be fully healed, and we can come back to where we need to come back. And God can do this for us, my friends. And the power of God is with us now. The power of God is with you now. And I just want to say that I love you and that I am here for you to help you in this. If you're having any kind of problems with this at all, I'm going to leave my email address and you can contact me if you're having issues. And I'm not going to be able to fix you. I can't fix your problems, but I, you know, I've been through this and I can help support you. I can help begin to give you down the right path where you can begin, begin to get healing from this and begin and be totally set free. And that is my prayer for you, that you know that God is here for you and that you can be totally set free from this. It's not a hopeless thing. I've been to where I thought that I would never be able to overcome this, and I've been able to do it. I've been able to do it. Amen. And all glory to God, all praise goes to God because only through coming back into the will of God and knowing that God's will for me is to be healed, God's will for you is to be healed and joining back with that will with God, joining back into God's will. And that's all we need to begin to do. And that's what I would ask you to do tonight is ask God if you're a Christian you know, wherever you're at, maybe you're not Christian, but just be ask God if you really want to be set free. Ask the Holy Spirit that's in your mind. The Holy Spirit is given to us. It's our communication link with God, but He shows us the truth. He will show you the truth of how you be can begin to see this in the right way. And ask Him to show you how to forgive yourself if you don't know how to forgive yourself. And how you can begin to forgive and how you can begin to get rid of the guilt and shame. Just go to Him and ask Him and know, knowing that you will receive an answer. Because that is our promise, my friends. That is our promise and our hope. And I know this to be true because I live it every day and it's within me, my friends. So I just praise you. I pray for you. I want so much for not only this addiction to be healed with you and you to know that you can be healed, but 
you know, anything else, God can heal in your mind anything, fear, guilt, shame, all of this darkness can be shined out by the light and be taken away, my friend. I love you. God bless you. Contact me if you do need some support, and I will gladly come beside you, take your hand the best way that I can, and let you know that Jesus is going to take your hand too, and He's going to help bring you into healing. And that is my hope for you. God bless you. I love you. Have a good night. All right? Have a good day, whatever it is. <laughs>